Busy bodies with a BMW. Let's walk up here. And who have we got here? Busy bodies. Ah, oh, Flossy Rossy. How are you going there? Very well, thanks, Kim. Well, thank you so much for having us. Is this your your baby here? Is it? This is the busy body mobile. This is the busy body, the BMW busy body. It's the one. So this is the lovely machine that you uh, acquired in your business. Correct. Wow, fantastic. So you live here as well, I believe? That's right. We own this entire apartment. So you own the upstairs. You live upstairs. That's right. And your business is downstairs. Part one of the business is downstairs. Part one. That is sensational. So you own this. It's a home and a place to work. That's right. And you have your magnificent BMW machine. Yes, wow. proud of the BMW. How about you take us through and show us what you've done here? Sure, okay. Well, let's go into the original studio. Okay. Which is, uh, originally dual purpose, strength and hit studio, uh, which has now become just the strength studio. Yep. Uh, so, here so, is the North Glory. Wow. This, lots of busybody green everywhere. Lots of busybody green. That's right. Wow, so take us through. Take us have a closer look, shall we? That's right. Let's go this way. All right. Nice couch to chill out on. Stuff like everybody's that. gear and boxing equipment. So how many people do you train a week through here? About 45. 45? And how much do you charge? Uh, single session rate is 86 now. Wow, 45 sessions, $86 a, a session. That's right. Wow, impressive. This is a busy, a busy, little, place a a busy little place to get a busy body. So show right. us like, some of your equipment here. All right, dumbbell rack from yep. 1 through to 50s. Yep. Couple of benches down here. Then we have a Smith machine and cable machine for some rehabilitation work. Yep. Uh, we have a lot of pushing exercises down here, which is seated press, bench press, assisted dips and chins, pulling to this side, that pull down, seated row. Uh, then we also have some lower body exercises down there, squat rack, leg press, composite motion leg press, hack squat. Massively uh, equipped. Quite well equipped. Massively and equipped. And you've got your little kitchen over here. That's right, and a bathroom. And the bathroom in there? Yes, of course. And an office. That's where you lose a bit of weight. That's right. Wow. <laughs> And I, I, I can't help but uh, keep looking at that, that, that beast out there, that beautiful car. It's not too bad, is it? So is that, you bought that car through the business? That's right. So the business allowed you to buy your dream car? Correct. Wow. And what, what type of car is it? It's a BMW 335i. Okay. It's a twin turbo. Twin turbo. Twin turbo that sounds very sexy. With a few mods. Oh, well, all right. She's, she's pretty quick. Okay. And you got, you're expanding next door? That's right. Yeah, take yeah. us, take okay. us through then we have a look. The plan was to put a hole in the wall. It's still a work in progress to actually connect the spaces together. But now we have to walk around the long way. And here's studio number two. This one is a work in progress, a bit echoey, so if the sound goes a bit crazy, that's the lack of acoustic absorption in here. Um, but it will be a fantastic place once it's done. We have 25 mil acoustic, uh, sorry, 25 mil foam rubber tiles for shock absorption. For yep. Uh, we have Nice space at the back there, which is going to be filled very shortly with a black leather lounge suite. Yep. Uh, to chill out on and enjoy before and after the fun. So, what type of classes you run in here? So, currently, all cardio based studio, uh, cardio based sessions are run from here. Yeah. Um, which is still one on one, uh, but there's also all the boot camps from here. So, tonight's boot camp has nine participants in it. Uh, it's a great space, obviously, with about 65 square meters of usable floor space in here, plus that huge cover. And how many uh, classes do you run away? Uh, boot camps, there are boot three currently going, um, but with extra trainers, there'll be extra classes on offer. Fantastic. Okay, well, how about uh, we sit down and uh, we find out more about where you come from, where you are, and most of all, where you're going. That sounds good to me. Ross, busy body. That's right. We're in your studio. We are. You just got married. That's correct. Last week. Oh, you have a new baby. Have a new baby. So new wife, new baby, but not so new business. Correct. That's been going a few years. Yeah. And oh, I love it. I've got goosebumps standing here looking at it. I'm quite proud of it. I'm quite proud. So I want to know, oh, there's lots of things I want to know. First of all, you were not always a fitness professional. No. And you're not 21 anymore. No, I'm 21 anymore. <laughs> so, oh, a 21 year old. So take, you finished school. Let's start there. Yes. What were you always going to do? Uh, I was always going to go into the corporate world. I did quite well at school and they always said, you should be a corporate person. So mm -hmm. I went and did some corporate they? stuff. They was McLean's College. Okay. They were a very academic based school and PE, physical education, wasn't seen as a career path for someone who did well academically. So okay. they basically sort of corralled me into the area of, of corporate world. So I went to university studying corporate things 
Uh, Corporate last, things? Corporate that things, sounds yeah. very important. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted three years there. Did you study economics degree. and accounting? No, it was actually, it was actually architecture, because of all the corporate oh, things. That was no the wonder you three years, so nice. Yeah, a bit of an architectural flair to it. Yeah. Uh, three years out of a five year degree, so I'm three fifths of an architect. Okay. Uh, and then decided that's enough of that, let's move into the real world and get a job. So I got a job working in IT. Uh, because of all the architectural things, I enjoyed the computer part of it the most. So you're smart and good looking. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Not wow. smart enough to finish architecture. <laughs> okay, so three fifths of an architect. That's right. And a computer programmer as well. Uh, internet help desk person at this point. Okay. Yeah, the person that says, here's your new password. Ah, <laughs> all right, yeah. So that was a high paying position? Not at all. Okay. No, that was entry level, very entry level. Mm -hmm. It was enough for me to have a taste of what it was like to have some money in the account, uh, mm -hmm. and I went out and spent it all straight away. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you don't earn much, and you spend it all, and you think you're doing well. Yeah. So it was a great first introduction to corporate life. Uh, and then after that, again, three, I did everything in three-year blocks. Three years of architecture, three years of IT. So I started in the help desk, moved into broadband. Uh, it was a new big thing back in the early thousands, the yeah, double yeah. Uh, and wireless broadband was just coming in, so I became a wireless broadband technician. Mm -hmm. and that's where I ended up with the company, and then thought, okay, it's time to go travelling. So I spent three years travelling, yeah. walking three years. Oh, this is you, is it? The three-year man. Three-year man. Okay. Okay. So where did you go? Uh, so first of all, it was to Paris. Yeah. Tried to live in Paris, uh, lasted a month, and thought, this isn't much fun. I don't speak French very well, and they don't want to speak English back to me. No. So I gave up that idea and ended up in London, as you do, mm -hmm. uh, and then got transferred with my company up to Suffolk in the middle of Still nowhere. Still computers? Still computers, but at this stage it was moving into project management. So it was okay. wireless broadband, but I worked for a company that won two tenders, setting up wireless broadband point to point through villages around Suffolk and Norfolk. Uh, so basically, the job required me to climb big church steeples and stick wireless antennas on the roof. Okay. Which was a way to see a very interesting, very bird's eye perspective of life. Come on, okay. Fossey, we've gone from private school to architecture to computers to travelling the world, yes. and now we're standing in your own personal training studio and it's your business and you're doing very well. That's mm. a big circle. How That's a big that circle. Uh, basically, I hit 30 years old and decided that... Three. I'm it's not <laughs> three lots of ten. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So once I hit thirty, I realised that I'm just doing jobs. I'm just seeing things, and the seeing things was amazing. But I decided it was time to, to get serious and to follow a passion. And all the jobs that I was doing were just were just that. Uh, they weren't a passion. They were ways to earn money, to learn some new things. But once the excitement of learning new things was over, and the daily grind of the job was in place, it just became became boring because I didn't sign up to the vision of the company, it wasn't me. Okay. So, so there's you're a, in peak physical condition, is that something that was a passion through this whole completely. journey? Yeah, I've always been uh, about looking after myself physically, eating well, exercising mm -hmm. well, uh, so that's basically what happened at 30, I decided what makes up me, what am I passionate about, staying in shape is what makes up me. Uh, so I then started investigating how I can make that part of my everyday everyday life, which led me to... You came to see us. All right, so can you look straight down the camera at the people who get to be 20 to 30 mm -hmm. and they're thinking about what they're passionate about? What are they, what's the question you have to ask yourself? Are you happy doing what you're doing? Uh, or is there some other path that you could take? That was a big learning curve for me. Um, throw the job in, sit at the desk, scratch the head, wonder what it is, but do I regret any of that decision making? Not one bit. Because here we are in your studio. Yeah, in my studio, <laughs> exactly right. But now there was a big journey between 30 and here as well. That's right. Um, and from an education point of view, you came to not just a fitness course, you came to a fitness business program yeah. because you had in your mindset you wanted to run your own business? That's right. I decided that. I had the passion and I like to think the, the dedication, hopefully the intelligence to make it successfully on my own rather than working for somebody else. You've already discovered you're intelligent and good looking, you've already you decided that. You can talk yeah. me up, thank you. Uh, so I decided I want to do it myself. You know, I've got some ideas about how I could make it work and I've been working for somebody else for my entire previous working life. So if I'm going to change things, let's change things all the way. Did you not like working for a boss? Did you want to be your own boss? Um, I always like to think that I had some creative ideas that I could share with people and a lot of the times those ideas were never acted upon and it was frustrating going around in circles, doing things where you could see improvements but that the upper management 
couldn't see the vision or had other reasons, other directives that weren't in line with my own. Okay, so when you're in the program, when you're doing the, the, the Max program, you were the guy that this is my new towel and this is my new water bottle and this is my business card. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my new stuff without any new clients. <laughs> but you obviously were excited about doing it your way. Correct, yeah. Okay, so now it's taking me step by step because now we've come to it. You've got a huge facility, you've got a successful business. That's right. And it wasn't always that way though. So when I started, I invested obviously most of my remaining cash flow from the travelling uh, into, into the course. And then from there, I had to decide how I was going to play things to start it out. And luckily, my brother-in-law at the time had a... He's not your brother-in-law anymore? No, my brother-in-law, <laughs> at the time, had a spare point, sorry, a punctuation in there. Uh, he had a, an old garage on his premises, and he wanted to build a home gym in there. And I said, well, I'm looking for a studio to work from. I was actually going out and talking to a couple of other people who had studios to see whether I could run a business from their location, but none was meeting my standards of where I could see myself. But so this you was, have high professional standards? I do, I've always have Obviously. high standards, yeah. Uh, but my brother-in-law, again, he's got standards so I knew that if he was going to do things he would do things well so we collaborated had some ideas about equipment and what the space was going to look like and we built it basically together he used it for his own training sessions with his training buddies mm -hmm. and I kept a certain amount of time in the evening aside for him to use it and all the rest of the time during the day which was when I tried to fill up my time uh, was my training studio. So it was fitness in the garage at home? It was fitness in the garage at home yes mm -hmm. and it was 30 square meters it was just a small two car garage it leaked, uh, we had to replace the roof, we had carpet dryers come in, so we put some carpet down, and of course they got soaked. Uh, it was a starting place, and you learned a lot, and mm -hmm. it was uh, not a flash corporate setup like this. But you had clients there, and you did well there. I did well. The mm -hmm. one thing that I learned is that I could ask for a, a, a good rate, a good investment rate from my clients, and they were happy to pay it. it Which was what, back in the garage? Uh, it initially started, I started at 68, but it wasn't very long before I decided, let's, let's, let's just bump things up a bit. So I moved to 77 for a single session rate. And how many people, because uh, I've been in the profession a little bit longer than you, where people say, even now, no one's going to pay for personal training. And you can still get a personal training session for $25 or $30, mm. and yet you started at a reasonable rate, which you said you bumped up fairly quickly. Mm. Why do you think you could do that? Why were people prepared to invest money in you? Because I had confidence that I was providing them a service that they saw value in. Um, it was me that they were buying, not the building. I was always scared about the fact that people might turn up and think, this isn't worthy of my money, but it's just a space, and it's you that fills it with your presence and personality, and that's what they're investing in. And I soon learned that that was a very valuable commodity to have, and you could put a big price tag on it. You also do something very special that I love. Because the people, well, the people that go to the gym go to the gym because they love it, but there's only 10% of the population that do that. You've really tapped into the market that doesn't want to go to the gym and doesn't have a lot of time. Mm. This fantastic sign on the wall here that says yes. for just 12 minutes of effort just every week. 12 minutes of effort per week, that's so right. So you've also tapped, really effectively tapped into people don't want to exercise long, they mm. want to exercise with you because you're a good guy and they don't want to invest a large amount of time. Exactly right. So Especially your sessions are how long? Uh, sessions, my sessions are 40 minutes, mm -hmm. um, but for that there's often some body composition tracking, there's food diary analysis. The actual session itself uh, is usually done in half an hour, mm -hmm. uh, but I allow a bit more time just to go through the eating, the motivation, the body composition. So you're a complete package. That's right. So you've got a, a successful business here. Mm -hmm. Where have your clients come from? Because this is also really important. Yes. So my original plan for how I was going to focus on my clients has changed. Originally it was recreational racket sports. Uh, that is now oh. a, yeah, that's right. That's what it started. Because you like to play squash. Uh, badminton was my okay. big game. I love squash, love tennis, I'll, I'll play them all happily and I yeah. thought I'd tap into that market uh, and it proved slow going uh, and I decided that in the meantime I'm just going to pick up clients and the type of clients that I was picking up just happened to be from uh, a lot of business networking that I was doing. So you went to networking events? Mm. So mm -hmm. originally it was Business Networking International or BNI which is probably the biggest and most established. Yeah. Uh, more recently it's TNG which is was a trade network group, which is now the networking group. Yeah. Uh, I'm still a member of TNG Mount Wellington, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just about forming some business contacts for another team of salespeople that talk you up. And of course, they have the opportunity to come here as well. And that's what my target market is now, which is time poor business owners. 
So you have a very specific target market mm -hmm. and you go to where that target market is, which is business networking groups, right. which is very simple to understand. Mm -hmm. And if you, were, if you were suggesting to people, how do I have a successful business, what would you say? <laughs> Be where they are. <laughs> if you want to target the sports market, hang out at sports clubs. Mm -hmm. If you want to target the businesses, go to business networks. So they're time poor, but they're not money poor. No, correct. So they're happy to invest the, the money with you. That's right. But let's have a, like, like this is common sense for me, but you dress professionally, you've got a beautiful car, you've got a, uh, what I love is I'm in a man's studio, usually they're a bit dirty, disorganised. This is immaculate. I had to fill the duster out before, oh. no, no, always keep it clean. Well, 5% of particularly business people who are who are good at what they do, 5% of those people won't come here if it's dirty. Mm. So to be in a facility that's so incredibly clean is just, <laughs> I love it, it's just awesome. Yep. But there's something about you, it, it, the passion for being a fitness professional, is that it got more, is it less, is it different, what's happened? Uh, it's always been very high from the start, from doing the course my passion was high and then the values that were instilled and also a big part of it which I to this day try and focus on is personal development and that was not a part of my thought process at the time. I thought I was going to do some personal training and a bit of business stuff but it was the personal development which was probably the biggest takeaway for me that you can make yourself a better person and that's just going to make you more attractive to more people. So where did you learn that? Uh, <laughs> it was all max, 100%. But I ask that because for me, again, that's a no-brainer. Mm. It's work harder on yourself than you do on your business and of course your business will grow. Uh, you've always said you don't know what you don't know and I didn't know that. I never knew and at school it wasn't part of the curriculum. You have to improve upon yourself because you need to know these subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. So I see that there's a bit of a failing in the education system there and something that is addressed by the likes of yourself. So the future. The future. You live upstairs, it's right. very convenient. Oh, yes. Newly married, new baby. That's right. And obviously, you're providing very well for your family. What's the plan now? What's the growth? The so, business? we're into expansion mode. So, the reason I've doubled the floor space and taken over next door, which gives us about 170 square meters now, uh, is that I want a team of trainers. There's going to be eight of us in here, mm -hmm. uh, all absolutely going crazy and having a great time. Uh, so, I've got a system uh, which is very well proven um, and very by the book uh, and anybody can follow it who's got any kind of uh, training uh, mm -hmm. and that's going to make them very successful. So that's what I'm looking for. Is so a man who's successful. gone from school to architecture to computers to now your own business and what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you're now going to provide a path for other people right. where they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like so my, role, with you. my role is going to be moving into a business mentor for my own trainers that come on board. And I already have my first mentoring client. So I have wow. a client who's a personal trainer from another institute and she doesn't know where to start. So I said, I can help you with that. Yeah. So she comes and sees me regularly for business mentoring and that's what I'm going to be providing for my trainers as well. Okay, so there's plenty of personal trainers in the world. Mm. There's plenty of people who call themselves personal That's trainers. Right. <laughs> there are plenty of people who have done fitness courses. What are you looking for? If you had eight perfect people working with you in here now, what kind of, what are you looking for? Oh, it's personality. Personality works through. So they need to be a bubbly, motivational person because at the end of the day, that's what's going to make you successful. You can have all the training skills can be taught, the system can be followed, but it's the personality that I want. So I want to see someone coming through the door that I think, I like you, you've got it, and let's give you a shot. So do you think that comes from passion? Do you think you're passionate oh, about this? Yeah, mm -hmm. passion is the biggest driver. If you're in it for the money, then people can see that. If you're in it for, you love Go it. Go work in the bank if you're in it for the money. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly. But, Don't work but the, the flip side of that though, is that people think, well, I'll have a, a career in the fitness profession, I won't earn much money, mm -hmm. but I'll do it because I love it. Well, you're living, breathing proof that, you, oh, yeah. that, that both are, if you're good at what you do, people will be prepared to invest in you. That's it, and the income that I have now, well out exceeds any that I was in, in the corporate world um, for doing less time in it as well. And I can also dictate the hours I want. I can work mornings, have an afternoon break, and do a couple of things, and take a whole day off. So you're a living, breathing example of you can choose your own hours, be your own boss, and so, decide how you're going to help people to be healthy, fit, and strong, doing it the Ross way. So it's very important to me having a young family and a nine-month-old son upstairs to spend more time with them. I can dictate my client sessions around spending time with him and his wake times. Okay, mm. so you're not 21 anymore, no. but you look like you are. Thank you. <laughs> the biggest challenge we have in our profession is that we don't have enough professional people. 
and often it's we attract younger people into our profession and they have to learn. What we're aiming to do is to attract professional people. So if you could please give, just to finish off, could you please give advice to the guy sitting in his office right now, and he might be 40, 50 or 60, who thinks he can't do what you're doing, it's not possible. What would you say to him if you could chat to him today? If I could chat to him today, I'd say, if you have a passion for it, you're never too old. The ex example is that the lady who I am mentoring at the moment, she's 61. Hey! I know. <laughs> and she decided to throw in her music tuition uh, that she's been doing and follow her passion. She was actually very overweight, decided that she didn't like that and wanted to get in shape, enjoyed the process and else to help others. So I'm helping her help others. Uh, you're never too old, no matter what age group you are. If you've got a passion, just do it. The money is an aside. It will come if you're good at what you do, if you've got the passion, then the income will follow. And for me, that's again, I'll use the word no-brainer. If you love what you do, you're passionate about it, people will be attracted to you and the business will grow. That's it. Congratulations, Gordon. Thank you. Man. Oh, so good. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared of going out and getting people. <laughs> what if they don't like me? I'll just get some business cards and I'll get all the, I'll surround myself with things and yeah. they'll be attracted to the things. I'll be really busy doing stuff. Yeah, I think, that, in looking back, I think that's what it was. I didn't have the confidence to say I'm worth $68 at the time, whereas now I'm confident to say, 86, please, come on here, <laughs> give it to me. Um, and Did you get your target market though? That's made you feel that comfortable? To be honest, I've been comfortable with everybody that's walked in through the door. Uh, I like to think that I can just chat very easily with any kind of personality, so I don't think it is the target market that's made me feel as comfortable. It's the fact that I know that I've got a set of skills which are valuable, and I've done this along, uh, long enough now to know that they are in demand. Yeah. So it's just, it's just experience which has taught me, actually, look, I am worth this, and I should be confident about it. So what's something you can think that would help build people's confidence? Or belief that you know. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was experience. Um, I was going around in circles, as you're well aware, <laughs> not wanting to go out, and it was just it was it was lack of confidence in my own abilities, and that I was worth more than I've ever been worth in my life. Uh, coming from a corporate world, you get paid a wage which isn't that high, uh, and then now you've got to say, actually, I'm in charge of what I earn, and I'm worth this, and put a dollar value on what you think you're worth, um, and that's the scary thing for me. I, I, was, I wasn't sure that I was worth it. Uh, whereas now I am, and it's been experience which has taught me that. It's a hard thing, to, I guess, to say to people, you are definitely worth this, now just take that information and run with it. I think you have to go through a bit of, a bit of the experience of trying to convince people you're worth it, and then if they buy it, then you run with it and say, actually, you know what, I'm getting enough feedback here. Did you have an epiphany day when you, when you realised, where, blah, 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 or you know, where did you morph into that? Uh, it probably wasn't any one day which it happened, it was a process of getting the next client and the next client. And each time you get a client on board, your confidence just grows that much more. So you never really have one moment, I think, where it was, this is it, yep, I've switched now, I'm a super confident guy. Each time just builds on that confidence a bit more until, you, until your, present, your price presentation gets that much more confident because you know that you're worth it. And then of course, the more confident you are, the more it comes through, the more people are like, oh, he's clearly worth it because he's confident. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of catch-22. It's, it's a hard one to work around from my perspective. Way, but I haven't found it. Yeah, but you've, you've done it so found incredibly it well. Yeah. Mm. So you don't want another one? You just want this one with eight trainers? I will see. So I don't think I will be long term happy with just this one eight trainers. I think the goal will be to get either another one or move this to an even bigger place and get a team of 15 trainers. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make the decision just yet. I don't want to shoestring and hamstring myself. Um, but I, I won't stop just yet. I don't know if we'll become Mr. Vision with 50 interesting <laughs> life something. Life. It's an interesting <laughs> I think he's going to hold the challenges that uh, I've had to face. Yeah. Um, but of course, he comes with great rewards as well. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, they train 10,000 human people in the world. That's big. That's big numbers. I can only imagine the, uh, the fun times and great challenges that have with that. that yeah, volume. but to affect that many people every seven days with your system. Oh, yeah. Exactly, and that's why I'm looking to expand because my vision is myself, super mm. fun, my vision, yeah. <laughs> is uh, to basically be a fly on the wall and just watch this little unit humming with people coming in, chatting, having a laugh, people coming in, being motivated, leaving, and just this great machine and operation that I've created helping many, many people. Um, and because I obviously have got the systems in place, 
knowing that I'm whole solely responsible for choosing who I've got on the bus mm -hmm. and the direction we're taking it. And sorry, it puts you great to good Yes, it's exactly. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still reading it, reading, rereading three chapters. <laughs> um, what do you? Oh, because I've got a few people in mind that I could send you, but as you know, there are people in this view they're going to be. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. You can't change. It doesn't change your spots, is that the? Well, no, they don't. Mm. Um, so, are you better off with someone that's um, like has no experience whatsoever? That's that what you I'm can, after. Yeah, 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 I'm after someone who I can mould into the busy body way.